James Shipp, Chief Marketing Officer from AG Administrators. Today, I'm joined by Doug Padron from Sparta Science, and we're here to talk about the partnership between Sparta Science and AG Administrators. Doug, welcome. Thank you, James. Yep, Doug Padron, the Senior Sports Strategist at Sparta Science, and it's a pleasure to, uh, to be here today and also discuss this um, outstanding partnership between two companies that I've had the pleasure of of being a, a, a client of and a purchaser of uh, over years, over a few, quite a few years in college athletics. Yeah, Doug, and, and that brings up a great point. Tell us a little bit about your background, if you would. Sure, yeah. Um, certified athletic trainer and athletic administrator for over 23 years in, in collegiate athletics. Stops along the way include uh, Michigan State, Villanova University, Monmouth University, and the University of San Francisco. Um, while I was at Villanova University and at the University of San Francisco, I was a um, I guess a client of uh, AG administrators um, and saw great value in, in the company, the, the insurance reduction identification, they, they provided medical cost insurance, medical cost reductions, um, et cetera. And also while I was at the University of San Francisco, I was a subscriber for Sparta Science um, technology that helps identify movement patterns and ultimately um, reduce injury risk. So Doug, along those lines, AG administrators were committed to the risk management around student athlete injuries and particularly the cost that's associated with that. We've partnered with Sparta Science because we see a real opportunity to implement uh, some risk management in the form of screening student athlete movement in the interest of trying to prevent injuries before they even happen. Talk to us a little bit about the partnership between AG and Sparta Science. Sure, yes, and it's um, you know, very rewarding to me to bring these two companies, to, or to see these two companies come together. Um, again, we're both passionate about um, the partners that they have that, you know, and get involved in the athletic departments um, and really have a great understanding of the DNA of, of these you know, very unique business settings that are collegiate athletic departments. So um, yeah, the, the partnership, consists of a, an initial offering of Sparta Science to come into uh, AG partners or potential clients um, to offer a risk, a risk analysis and an injury um, risk identification for each of the sports and in turn each of the student athletes. Um, so it would be a, a one day visit on campus for the performance staff and administrators to, to learn about the technology, um, how it works, the, the ease at which it can be applied uh, and then we follow up, we at Sparta Science follow up with a risk analysis report for each of the teams, um, you know, identifying concerns that can be uh, applied to the training, um, that can be applied to the training for each of the, each of the sports at the university. So Doug, you talked a little bit about the exclusive offer between us and, and there's more information available online. We have a landing page, that web address is actually posted by your company. So the web address is spartascience.com slash ag dash partnership that's spartascience.com slash ag dash partnership and there are details about this exclusive offer uh, for current clients of ag administrators and, and we certainly appreciate sparta science offering that analysis um, for our, our current clients talk to us a little bit about the results that we have seen when AG and Sparta have partnered for uh, the betterment of a university and their uh, medical expense and insurance program. Sure, and I can speak best from my own experience at the University of San Francisco. Um, when I arrived, I believe we were in the 50s in um, surgeries per, per year. Um, one example I can give you is I arrived at, on campus um, in December of 2011. Um, at the end of, the, which was obviously at the end of the, the women's soccer season. They had six females that year have knee surgery just in the, in the fall, um, which was an outrageous number. Um, so again, in total, we had 59 surgeries that year. That number was reduced, reduced over time to the time we got to 2018. And it wasn't, it was reduced dramatically, but our average really was over all the years um, between 2012 and 2018 when we had the AG um, Sparta Science Partnership to 23 surgeries performed, which is probably an average number, uh, and an appropriate number, and maybe even less than average, I should say, for, um, for a university of that size, an athletic department that size. And even more alarming was 100, over 100 MRIs for just 200 student athletes um, in 2011, and, and then reduced down to 38 in 2018. I mean, 
we significantly reduced the medical costs with the partnership of, of or with the subscriptions of having AG and being a or subscription of Sparta Science and being a client of AG. Um, again, two businesses that their goal really is to create ultimately to create a better experience for the student athlete. And that's certainly occurred at the University of San Francisco. Yeah, it's a great case study and, and beyond the University of San Francisco. One of the things that we've done is performed an analysis on uh, what happens when an institution has the, the combination of AG administrators and Sparta science. Mm -hmm. And um, in our analysis, what we have seen is, you know, across, uh, I believe there were 10, eight to 10 universities in this, this study, uh, in this data analysis, saw a 48% reduction in the number of surgeries, 45% uh, reduction in the number of claims, and a 21% reduction in the number of injuries. Um, so, you know, have really seen some, some great results uh, and some very concrete results when Sparta Science is utilized and when AG is helping to measure the efficacy, continue to improve upon uh, how Sparta is used and the direction of care and, and the things that we do uh, to try to manage the risk and the cost associated. Uh, we also have a couple of other case studies, uh, the University of Pennsylvania being one of them. And, you know, this is a great example of when Sparta was, was introduced at the University of Pennsylvania. Um, I guess I would make the analogy, it's kind of like people who like to dip a toe into a swimming pool before they jump in. The hmm. University of Pennsylvania was very similar in how this was implemented. We had three to four teams who really were all in from, from the beginning. And it had a lot to do with who was really compliant in the weight room and with the implementation of strength and conditioning across their entire plan for performance for their sport. As the implementation of Sparta Science gained more and more momentum, we saw more teams, more coaches, and therefore more student athletes really invested in Sparta Science and, and using it uh, better and better. And you know, from our standpoint, one of the things that we saw is from 2008 to 2014, uh, which was before Sparta Science was introduced at all at the university, the average claim cost was $1,531. After we got Sparta implemented, and again, there was you know, a, a real transition in the implementation, uh, but the average claim cost across the four years went down to $1,429, so almost $100 savings. And while that may not appear that significant, uh, it really is significant, particularly when you look at uh, the ability to reduce the overall number of claims and number of injuries. And I think some of the data here on the right with the two line graphs uh, really show us, um, you know, the overall spend on the far right there the overall claims cost. The 2019 year isn't fully complete, fully mature on the claims, but as we saw better and better implementation, we really did see the overall cost of claims, the overall spending claims come down for the University of Pennsylvania, and quite honestly, somewhat dramatically as well. Yes. Doug, can, can, can talk to us a little bit. Oh, sorry. If I could just step in here too. The numbers are one thing, and these are you know, great business metrics that we're sharing, but the day-to-day -day of the student athlete in an environment that looks like, you know, on the graph here, uh, post-SPARTA implementation, you know, is, is significant. The, at the University of San Francisco, we were, with the cost savings, which was hundreds of thousands of dollars in medical expenses, we were able to, you know, build a new, build a new weight room, uh, renovate and expand a, a, tr a training room, add staff in the performance areas, whether it's strength conditioning, athletic trainers, um, have a snack station for student athletes once the NCA, you know, um, approve that the rules. And it, it's in most places now, but University of San Francisco is ready day one once the NCA um, opened up the regulations associated with that. And, you know, and, and that tied into the other investments we made around nutrition. So um, the numbers are great and risk managers love to see them, but, but ultimately college is about the experience for the for the student and in particular in what we're discussing here the student athlete and you know making smart business decisions in um in in, in
aligning with AG and, and, and connecting with Sparta make a big difference. Um, and in these times, there's no more important, uh, more important thing to look at than the student athlete experience. Yeah, it's a great transition, Doug, and I appreciate you bringing up that point. Uh, I mentioned a little bit of, of the transition that the University of Pennsylvania went through in implementing Spartan, where I made the analogy that they would dip a toe into the pool, mm -hmm. and then over the course of the better part of three years, started to get more and more teams and therefore more and more student athletes on board with utilizing the technology. Um, that brings me to the University of Delaware. Talk to us a little bit about how the University of Delaware is using the technology. Yeah, I personally love what they do at the University of Delaware. Um, Christine, who you see listed here on the quote, um, really leads their, leads their technology division in the performance area. And she, they, in their fall sports this past 2019, it would have happened once they moved into 2020 in the spring if, if, if athletics continued. Um, every Monday, they would scan all of their athletes um, and test all their athletes using our, our software um, and identify kind of where they were um, based off of their baseline and even where they were in the beginning of the season. Because obviously, we know that fatigue sets in with the travel and the competition and, you know, even the academic um, requirement that comes when, you, when you're in season. Um, and then they use that data, that data to share with the sport coaches, um, the student athletes and the rest of the performance staff, including, you know, nutritionists as well to identify a, a plan for that athlete for that week and for the in turn for the team as well on how to prepare for the next series of competitions coming up that week and they have you know they've had great success doing that and keeping their student athletes healthy and you know had success in the, uh, on the fields of competition as well their field hockey team won a championship for the first time in a while and they you know they credit it to um to the health and, and well-being of the student athletes and again this process of using the data to identify where their athletes are on a Monday leading into, you know, an in-season week of competition. So you mentioned uh, University of Delaware scanning their athletes every Monday. Mm. Uh, that seems like perhaps a, a, a huge task. Talk to us a little bit about the time that it takes to scan a student athlete and the scalability of this. Sure. In, in five minutes, you could actually have all three of our scans. So the jump scan, normal, um, vertical jump, which gives a full body assessment of, um, of injury risk and, and movement patterns. There's also, as you can see pictured here, the, the plank scan, um, simply a balance on the you know, upper body, again, identifying core strength and upper body strength and any instabilities that may exist in between the two um, shoulder joints. Um, and then also the balance, really the reverse of the, the or the, the opposite of the upper body, same thing, identifying injury risk and stability, uh, fatigue component, um, as well. So all three of those together really give you a, a full understanding of where the athlete is. And, you know, we do, James, in our careers, we've done many a pre-participation physical exam, and it usually takes place, you know, once a year in the beginning of the year. This is something that's a, an objective measure that you can do on a weekly basis without a great impact to the student athlete. And this is all worked into their um, already scheduled training. So there's actually a warm-up associated with this that, that most strength conditioning coaches use as the warm up prior to, um, prior to the workout session. Um, and then they just you know, cycle the athletes through um, these, these five minutes of testing. So it can be done very quickly um, and, you know, without a great investment in, in identifying where the student athletes are. And the science behind Sparta's science, is it an evidence-based approach? It is an evidence-based approach. There's over a million and a half scans and data that's put into, you know, I don't want to go into the details of machine learning, but, you know, it is machine learning. Um, and you have to have faith in that because it is a very valuable thing. And in a lot of ways, it's running our, our world now in te technology. So, um, yeah, very evidence-based um, has been, we've had several publications that's um, validated what we do at Sparta Science um, and, you know, great results. Yeah, so you mentioned over a million scans and Sparta Science certainly has a, a tremendous president, presence in uh, collegiate athletics, but in order to get a million scans, you must have some partnerships outside of collegiate athletics. We do, and one of the most valuable and you know, probably personally gratifying for all of us is our role in the military, where those were, and it has taken a long time for the military to get there, but those, the soldiers, war fighters, whatever you wanna call them, are, um, are now trained as athletes. Um, and Sparta technology is very prevalent in across our military and, and some of our allies around the world, including uh, very prevalent in Australia as well. 
And then there's also a newer vertical for us, but where we're getting a lot of population is again, is training people who do some type of physical work or even anyone in, in the workplace setting. We all spend so much time and even more time now behind the desk uh, on Zoom meetings, but um, all of those people really fall into our kind of corporate health vertical. Um, and we're seeing great, res er, great early results there in identifying um, injuries that could ultimately lead, lead, lead to workman's comp issues and, you know, and, and a loss of workforce um, for, for certain companies. So that's, that's our third vertical and that's where you get uh, all these many scans. Yeah, it's an interesting parallel that you bring up between uh, soldiers in the military and student athletes in the collegiate setting. Uh, military soldiers have a lot of repetitive motion, um, mm -hmm. probably a lot of repetitive injury, and um, very much like collegiate athletics, the investment that our nation has in uh, soldiers is extremely great. And mm -hmm. having lost days from their training or their ability to be available for training or for just performing their job um, is, a, is critical. And I think very similar in, in college athletics, having student athletes available to train, um, having student athletes available for a game is obviously the ultimate. But it's very interesting in, in my career as a, a clinical athletic training in the collegiate setting. You know, one of the things that I realized is that four or five year window that we have a student athlete on campus really is not that big of a, of a window. Yeah. Um, you know, missing significant amounts of time due to injury could really hamper the development of that student athlete. And ultimately from a business standpoint, affect the return on investment that we had as an athletics department in the scholarship and, and just in, in that student athlete in general. Talk to us a little bit about the results that you're seeing when Sparta Science has been implemented, particularly in the military, to lost days and, and injury rates. Yeah, they're, they're fairly significant. Uh, unfortunately, the military was somewhat inefficient in the way that it trained. It had it relied on um, an old school approach of, and this still takes place. There's you know things about the military that that need to continue to be done to de develop readiness and and effectiveness of of the soldier and um, but what was happening is there were as you mentioned so many overuse injuries and through basic training there just wasn't the opportunity for for soldiers and war fighters to get healthy um, so they would just continue to go through and grind through it and then be you know deployed wherever they may and they and they really just never got over these injuries so the military is kind of pulled back a little bit identified um, different testing that could take place aside from you know fitness testing that could take place, adjusted that accordingly, and then many of the branches have added Sparta Science to help understand what's going on with the, with the soldier when, they, when they're even through the recruiting process, identify what their potential injury risks are, and then they've really built a full performance department around, um, around in each of the branches and around the, the soldier itself. Um, and, those, so, and those performance staff include strength conditioning coaches and athletic trainers are using Sparta Science to identify training programs, uh, rehab, prehab programs um, for the soldiers so that the, the military now is in a much better place to have, I guess, soldiers deployed um, from basic uh, and be more ready than they've ever been. Yeah, Doug, you bring up a great point because not only is the, the technology and the solution that Sparta Science represents great in identifying predisposition to injury and uh, hopefully trying to eliminate injuries before they happen. But it's also a tremendous tool in assessing um, the rehabilitation following injury to prevent either further injury or just to ensure that rehabilitation is complete and a student athlete is safe to be back on the field. Tell us a little bit about how Sparta Science can be used in that way. Yeah, and this is to me one of the great values that probably has been a little bit overlooked by athletic trainers in many settings, even you know, including our, in, including many of our partners. Um, we've done a very good job of educating them. I think over the last year of how to use all three tests to bring an athlete back uh, through a long-term rehab program. And James, you you and I both know from our experiences that you know, I'm not going to say in the dark, <laughs> but as we brought an athlete through uh, like an ACL protocol. You know, there is an art to, uh, to rehab, um, along with the science of doing it, 
And you know, you always wanted to, there were enough parameters to understand that it would be safe for the athlete to take that next step, but you didn't always know 100%. I think Sparta gives you that confidence and the ability, let's use, to go back to the ACL example. I mean, early on, uh, you know, in the first couple of weeks, a, an athlete can do this plank test. Um, and again, it, it identifies kind of where they are in their core and you can strengthen that easily through and, and maintain that strength easily through the rehab process. Um, and then, you know, next steps obviously would be go, go to the balance test. And then ultimately they would get to the jump, jump test as they were getting closer and closer to functional activity. But it's a great, these are great identifiers to take the next step along the way. And ultimately when the athlete returns, we both know that you can't, as much as we try as athletic trainers and physical therapists, you can't recre recreate everything that takes place on, on the field. And there's going to be some, you know, so once they return to practice, there's going to be fatigue set in going to be probably the athlete kind of moves back a little bit slides back a little bit physically um, but so you continue to test them through these three scans to see where they are and make appropriate practice decisions for that returned uh, return to to play athlete post injury post significant injury and this can be applied I mean I'm applying it to one of the severe examples of an ACL but it can be a, these can all be applied to you know basic ankle sprain or you know or or a shoulder injury or, you know, even a, a significant bone bruise or something like that, or even a contusion that, that can be pretty um, limiting to a student athlete, depending on their sport and the location of the injury. Yeah, and there's great recent research about concussion and lower kinetic chain injury. Mm -hmm. so I think some of the, the force plate approach particularly lends itself to seeing how uh, the, the cognitive motor systems are functioning um, maybe at, a, at a, a holistic level for a student athlete post concussion, where they may clear your concussion return to play protocol. Uh, they may clear your screening and then something on uh, the musculoskeletal assessment, either from their time away mm -hmm. uh, from part participation, day in and day out participation as they rehab from a concussion. Mm -hmm. um, or, or just, um, you know, maybe cognitively and, and from a motor standpoint, their motor function isn't fully returned uh, after that concussion. So this can be a great solution for that as well. Correct. Um, you know, Doug, we really, at, at AG Administrators, we really value the partnership we have with Sparta Science and we appreciate what it brings to the table. Um, just to reiterate, we've developed this relationship because we believe in the solution and we've seen it in the data um, with that and, and there's more information available at this landing page at spartascience.com slash ag partnership so if you want more information please go to that landing page and check out the information that's available or contact uh, ag administrators for more information doug anything else that you want to cover you know, I think just the final thoughts in that, um, you know, Sparta Science really values the connection with AG administrators, as I said before, from my experiences. I mean, very passionate about identifying and analyzing the, the insurance and, and medical cost data and making a difference on campus so that ultimately student and athletes benefit, you know, having conversations about um, the details associated with medical costs and not just having this big number or you know, that's, that's sent in every, every year or premium that's sent in every year, but the customer service um, and input and education really that goes along with it. I think oftentimes risk managers at universities don't fully understand the uniqueness of a, a, an athletic medicine department in a collegiate setting. And as athletic trainers, we're not often educated um, you know, through school and even our early experiences on, insur on insurance costs and, and how to really, you know, make a difference, make an impact. And I think AG in my experiences is over, you know, it's been, which was were over 10 years. Um, I learned a lot from my time um, consulting with staff members at AG about insurance, how it works um, and how we can make a difference on campus by working together and following the lead of, uh, of AG administrators. So I'm pleased to be um, associated with this partnership between Sparta Science and AG administrators and look forward to making an impact on campuses across the country. Doug, we really appreciate your time and your expertise and insights today. Thank you, James. Appreciate it.